right, we're at the top of the hour here. I think it's about time to get started. And since we've already done a test of audio and picture, glad to have you guys in here with a good connection. I want to thank you for your attendance because ultimately, uh, you know, you're taking your time out of your busy schedules to be here for a webinar like this, and we do appreciate you being here. First and foremost, uh, I just want to cover a quick, uh, uh, a couple ground rules here for the event. We are recording it, so at any given time, if you're not able to stay the entire duration of the webinar, or if you'd like to watch a recording of the event, that's normally what would take place because we do cover a lot of information. Uh, we we want to make sure that you have the resources available, and we will be sending that out both on our YouTube channel and then also with the account managers and via email uh, after the event. Um, we do have some interesting stuff to discuss today. In fact, uh, yesterday our team and I got together and I decided to redo the presentation to include a strategy with regards to the event because I have a I have a soft spot for momentum and divergence, and I, I love to teach these types of concepts. And uh, there's some really, really great uh, insights that we're going to be sharing here for today's event. So you guys are definitely in store for a great event. Um, a couple things, too, is uh, if you guys have questions, type them in the chat box. I will respond to them. If I don't get to them right away, uh, please note I'm not ignoring them. I just want to make sure that uh, I get through the topics at hand, and then we can spend some time at the end of the event for some Q&A. Okay, so that being said, today's discussion and today's webinar event, we're going to be going over uh, momentum and automated divergence. Now, I put in here we have a bonus strategy. And the reason I'm talking about this now is because half of the event is going to be discussing momentum and divergence. The other half of the event, I'm going to be teaching you guys a trading system that, uh, in my opinion, is superior to many ways in which can be used for uh, divergence trading. So if you're somebody that is using divergence or you're interested in looking at momentum and divergence, uh, there's we, we've developed ways to enhance the efficiency of trading divergence through the use of volume profile. And, and uh, I'm going to be talking about that in a lot of detail towards the second half of today's webinar. Okay, so uh, we'll cover a quick disclaimer. As always, it's important to put this in here for risk purposes, transparency purposes, and industry disclaimer requirements. Please take a second look this over. If you have questions on the risk disclaimers in the space, please email us after and we can send you a copy. Okay. Now, I want to introduce our team. Is there anybody in here that's new to NeuroStreet webinars? Uh, I recognize a few of your guys' names, but there is some new faces in here that, I, that I, I, I'm that i not uh, familiar with. So if this is your very first webinar with NeuroStreet or, or this is your first time joining us for a Momentum and Divergence event, welcome. I want to introduce our team quickly. We're going to talk about the top three Momentum and Divergence problems. Uh, there are problems using momentum and divergence. I want to cover those very quickly and efficiently. I then want to provide you with three solutions in which we can use to our advantage using the VM Divergences software. Uh, I think it's really, really important to know why you use a tool, why you want to use an indicator, or why you would look to apply a strategy uh, uh, with regards to the software. So you don't just use something unless it solves a problem, right? So that's why we, we want to teach you that. And then I'm going to spend most of the event going over examples and the bonus strategy where we actually teach you how to use volume profile to enhance divergence trading. Now, for some of you guys, uh, just a quick disclaimer on this. I'm going to be showing examples of three different ways to use volume profile. One of those will be with the uh, standard volume profile available in our platforms. The other will be uh, using some of our volume profile software as an add-on to this. So the topics for this webinar is the divergent software but I'd like to spend a little bit of time enhancing divergence by using volume as an added bonus, okay? Now, at the end, I do have a breakdown of an odds enhancer checklist. So we had a question here by the gentleman by the name of William Bright. He says, will you be sharing a PDF about the webinar after? 
uh, not necessarily a PDF, but you will be able to take screenshots of the uh, of the last slide, which is an which is a breakdown of the system that we're going to be teaching you. And and I like to throw that in as, as an added bonus because it's months, if not years, of knowledge crammed into one slide. So I think it's really valuable, and it'll be very useful if you are looking to use something like this moving forward. You'll also be able to watch the video again as well. Now we do have special pricing. But I think it's important to know that moving forward, uh, NeuroStreet has taken uh, some changes with regards to how we provide discounts to our customers and to new uh, new traders. And so what we're going to do is, in order for you to qualify for discounts, you'll be having to get in touch with an account manager, and we'll explain that at the end of the event. Uh, so we'll provide you the links and all that stuff as well. So with that being said, Let's get started. Just a quick uh, a quick round of our team. Michael runs our supply and demand and order flow room. Myself, Sean, I'm the president of NeuroStreet and chief architect of all development software and systems. And then also uh, Raul runs our market profile program and is the educator for that trade room. Ashley and Ben are on the back end with our, our sales teams, marketing teams, and support and engineering. So ultimately, if any given time, if you guys have any questions, or you'd like to get in touch with any of our teammates, uh, myself included, we're an email away. We have an open door policy. Yes, we are a big organization, but we do respond and we do take care of making sure we communicate with our customers as well as our future and new new traders that join our teams, right? So um, I'm not sure your experience with other companies, but Neural Street's got a very good environment for communication, okay? So that being said, I'd like to just jump right into the details, okay? There's three problems traders face with regards to momentum and divergence. Okay, now actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a cursor here so I can draw. I like to draw on the PowerPoints and that way you can understand where my, my, my thought process is with regards to uh, what we're looking at here. Give me one second, grab a pen. Perfect. So I want to talk a little bit about... Uh, the difference between fast and slow momentum. I'm going to break down type 1 and type 2 divergence. And then I'm going to explain when to be trading divergence. Very simple. We've built this out over the course of years to be able to enhance divergence trading. It should not be difficult, but it is difficult. And that's the truth. It is a very difficult concept. There's a lot of room for error with regards to divergence trading, especially because most people don't understand what divergence is best suited for. And it, it may not even be your core trading strategy, but it can definitely enhance or be used in conjunction with other systems. So I do, I do want to make note of that. And what you're seeing here, I'm just going to put a little drawing here, one and two. Okay, so up here is a chart of our VM divergences software. And what you're seeing here is there's some divergence right here. There's some divergence right here. We've got a, a dialog box. And you're going to notice that there's, there's an oscillator down here that goes like this. And then there's also another oscillator that kind of comes over top of it. Now, what you're seeing here is this sub panel is actually this up top here okay and what it is it's hybrid momentum and i'm going to be explaining that in, in in detail we'll go into what hybrid momentum is but for the most part the goal of today's webinar is to take these three problems and to give you solutions on how to use the vm divergences to fix them okay so we're going to talk about fast and slow momentum. We're going to talk about type 1 and type 2. And we're going to talk about when and when not to be trading divergence. That's the three primary topics. And then we'll transition into a rules-based trading system for you to learn from. Okay. So let's kind of touch base on... Let me grab this cursor here. I want to talk about momentum confluence. Now, when we talk about momentum confluence, we're talking about two different subsets of data. And what I mean by subsets of data is unlike a standard RSI or a MACD, and I'll just grab like a, you know, let's say we, uh, let's say we, we have a price chart like this, okay? And you've got your, in, your, you know, your prices going up here and you've got the market going like that, right? 
Normally, you guys have a sub panel indicator with whatever indicators you're using, and you'll either have like an RSI or a, maybe a MACD, or maybe you're using uh, maybe you're using a, a, a proprietary indicator from another another vendor. Maybe you're using some of ours. Maybe it's an order flow tool. Maybe it's a whatever the case may be. Okay, what's important to understand is that when we talk about confluence of data we're taking more than one so we're gonna plus one plus two we're taking several indicators for the for the most part what we're doing is we we're using a fast oscillator okay and then we've overlaid a slow oscillator on top of it and the reason for this is because fast is responsive Okay, slow is more powerful. And the reason I'm explaining it like this is because sometimes for market timing, having a fast oscillator is very good. But sometimes what will end up happening is you'll have a, you'll try to understand if a trend is going to continue or if you're actually in a situation where you maybe the market's trying to fake you out. Uh, that cannot be dis that cannot be understood unless you have a powerful oscillator in combination with it. And the reason I say this is because a lot of times fast momentum will change before slow momentum will kick in, and that's the difference between continuations and getting faked out into the market. And so what I'm going to do is I want to break this down a little bit. I want to explain what confluence is. <laughs> we have two oscillators on the VM divergences software. The histogram is a fast oscillator and what it does it measures uh, velocity cycles it's not a MACD it's not an RSI it's not a CCI it's none of that stuff it's velocity cycles and it looks at cycle analysis and the reason it looks at cycle analysis is because cycle analysis is involves several measurements of, of momentum not just one aspect and that's why we we use it is because it's looking at confluence of internal data now what we're doing on top of it is we're overlaying a MACD Bollinger Bands. Now the MACD Bollinger Bands is not a new product. It's not something that is some fancy oscillator that needs to be renamed or anything like that. The MACD Bollinger Bands is very powerful because what it does, it looks at, it looks at slow momentum with a measurement of standard deviation involved with it. And so what we end up looking for is we look to see if the two of the oscillators are moving together. Because when you have an indicator that has two different oscillators, okay, let's do this. Let's say we have momentum rising like that on the fast oscillator. And then all of a sudden, momentum picks up on the slow oscillator. A lot of times what will end up happening is that's where you get the big moves kick in. Same thing to the other side, right? And that's exactly what we're, we're showing here. We have confluence. If you take a look here, both of them are moving together. And that normally creates what we call accelerated momentum or accelerated follow through. Okay. Now the difference between when that is not true is when you can see that you know potentially the oscillators are not working together. You can see where fast momentum, which would be a histogram, or the big term momentum, which is the MACD, are moving in opposing directions. A lot of times what will end up happening is that's a result of markets not following through, getting oscillation, et cetera, et cetera. And Technically, the difference between the two is the conditions in which we look to expect in the market. Now, before I go into divergence, I want to talk a little bit about that. I want to bring this up. I have a notepad here, and, and I've, I've, I've written on this for a reason, because <laughs> a lot of traders get exposed to trading through a webinar like this, or maybe you've learned some tricks of the trade or you've been experienced in trading for a while. I really don't know where you guys have been before, but I can tell you this, there's always room to learn. 
And some of the things that I've learned over the last few years that have really, really changed the way our students are succeeding and also myself as an educator and a trader um, is really understanding the difference between what to expect out of market conditions. Using software and using an indicator is one thing, but understanding when and why to apply something is even more powerful. And so maybe before I go any further, can you guys maybe tell me if you're using momentum or divergence? Just type a yes, you are, or no, you're not. And if you consider yourself a new or an experienced trader, I'd really like to get a feel for the audience and understand you know, who's in here and uh, what to expect. So Vincenzo says he's using divergence and he's an intermediate trader. There's a lot. Alfred, Banu, Catwright, Charles, Christian Cross, Ernest, Gary. I'd hope all of you guys, if I didn't mention, <laughs> you guys could all kind of maybe comment. I'd appreciate it. So let me kind of talk about what we call the 80-20 principle. And let's just break down 20% of the market. And let's break down 80% of the market. Okay. For those of you that, okay, so experience, he's using divergence. Al's saying he's not using divergence. He's an interim trader. Jose is saying divergence is a signal. Yes. Okay. So the reason I'm starting with this is because when I get into teaching you about divergence, I want to make sure you understand how we're going to apply it, how to read momentum for it and uh, talking about when and why we would even consider it. And the reason I love talking about divergence is because the market conditions are actually primed for divergence trading more than directional trading. And let me explain that for a second. Most people start off learning to be directional traders, meaning we're going to trade a trend or trade momentum or look to buy a pullback or try to catch a moving average, or whatever that case may be. The problem with that is that's only 20% of the time. The market is only trading in a directional state normally around 20, maybe 30% of the time. And the problem with that is you're going to have less exposure to good opportunities. Okay? It's not to say that directional trading is bad. It's not. In fact, there's a lot of profitable directional strategies. But it's important to know the likelihood of when those systems should be applied. If you have a directional strategy or if you have a trend trading system or a momentum system, it's really important to know that that is most likely going to be giving you 30% exposure at best to really healthy conditions for your strategy. Now that's that, that's that may not be easy to hear. Like you might uh, you might not um, you might not like to un you might not like hearing what I'm about to tell you. In fact, you might not even agree with me, and I'm okay with that. I'm here to help teach those that are willing to learn it, because in reality, there's only outside days or inside days. And I'm going to explain this. This is so, so powerful. Let's say this is yesterday and this is today. We always know yesterday's range. We always know yesterday's range. We never really know today's current range. We, it, we might have an idea. And what ends up happening is the reason inside day oscillations happen 70 to 80 percent of the time is because everyone in the entire world is using yesterday's range to help ascertain cheap or expensive price levels because nobody really knows what's about to happen today and when we get these outside day range extensions where the market trends to the upside or to the downside we normally, if you went back and studied your price chart, you're going to find that on, on most of the times, 20 to 30% of the time, the market is trending. And the other 70 to 80% of the time, the market is staying within yesterday's range or the prior day's ranges. And that's the difference between trend versus oscillating structure. What to expect for your trading systems. 
because I'm not here to just try to wet in the whistle with some nice fancy software. We have really, really great trading systems and trading software. My job is to help you understand why and when you'd want to use these things. Because if you think about trending conditions, it's an unbalanced market. The market, institutions, hedge funds, money managers, prop shops, money makers, all that stuff, they don't want an unbalanced market. That's normally inventory reports, GDP releases, non-farm payrolls. These things create trending conditions, news catalysts, fundamental driving factors that move the market. When this isn't happening, or when we don't really have anything that's creating these large unbalanced factors, the market spends most of its time trading in what we call a balanced market. Now, balanced markets are normally inside of the prior day's range. You're going to have more trading opportunity for them. And they're best suited for reversal strategies. Divergence trading is a reversal strategy. So the reason why divergence is actually very powerful is because you have more opportunity to trade divergence. It's going to give you more trading scenarios. You'll be able to get more exposure to conditions that your strategy is applicable. And that's why divergence trading is often overlooked by inexperienced traders. And then once experienced traders get good, they realize, man, I need to start paying attention to divergence. It's really, it's really, really, really critical to know when and why we'd want to use it. Now, I'm going to be teaching you a four-step plan using market and volume profile plus divergence today. In fact, my job first is to teach you what divergence is and when to best apply it. I'm going to be teaching you a strategy that incorporates volume and market profile plus divergence. I also did a video several months ago, and I'm going to give you the link to this video. We went and back-tested several setups using the VM Divergence software with what I'm about to teach you. And from our back-test results over a small sample size, we were getting over 80% win rates. And I'm not here to say that that could be true today. I'm here to show you that in past scenarios where we took an audience on the fly and we hadn't looked at a chart and we basically wanted to do a walk-forward proving environment, we were able to take what I'm going to show you today, use market profile, and produce setups on an entry chart that produces 80% winning rates. Now, that might not be 80% today. It might be less. might be more. I'm just here to show you why it's effective. You might not want to trade divergence, but use it for your strategies. You might want to incorporate what I'm about to teach you. But I want you to know why this webinar is probably one of the more important webinars you're at is because this. I would rather teach you strategies that could be, be applied more often in healthier trading conditions that the industry wants versus conditions that nobody can predict. Give me a why if that makes sense to you. I want to make sure that I haven't lost anybody and that everybody's primed for a good discussion. Yes, no, maybe so. I'm going to grab a little bit of water here and we're going to get ourselves into round two. Excellent. Let's talk about type one versus type two divergence. Divergence just means when two things are working against each other. And that's price versus whatever you want to measure it. You could measure price versus momentum. You could measure, measure price versus order flow. You could measure price versus volume. You could measure price versus anything. Time. You could create divergence on anything. For this discussion, we're using it based off an oscillator. We're using it based off momentum. Momentum is used to measure the speed of change, the rate of change, the velocity of a market. 
And it's often the underlying factor of many different indicators that are being used in trading systems. That's why momentum is very powerful, because momentum is a constant. When we look at tools, when we talk about a constant, momentum is always true. Mo the market's always moving up, moving down, or sideways. Either way, momentum is always a factor. Whether or not it's moving fast or slow, that's ne negotiable. Okay? Now... When we look at the two different types, type one is what we call differential divergence. And if we were to, to I, I guess you would say the, the most important part of this slide is knowing whether or not momentum is leading price or if price is leading momentum. Okay. And so right now when we talk about type 1 divergence, it's called differential divergence. And that's normally when price is being led by momentum or momentum is leading price. And, and normally what that means is I'm going to grab a cursor here and we're going to just draw on the chart so you can see exactly an example. So let's say we've got two scenarios okay, like this. Bearish divergence is when price is making higher highs and momentum is making lower highs. Basically, one's going up, one's going down. Very simple. The other one is price is going down and basically what's happening is price is going up. Momentum is going up. Normally, what this means is momentum is leading price because what that's doing is it's showing us that even though price is going up the the way and the speed in which price is going up is getting slower or when prices are going down the rate in which prices are dropping is getting slower that's why momentum is creeping up that's the only difference between bearish or bullish differential divergence so Takeaway here, momentum leads price. Very important to know that. The other aspect of divergence is when we look at type 2 divergence, also known as hidden divergence. This is when price leads momentum. So I'll give you an example. Okay, I'll just draw over here. I'll draw over there. So if we've got hidden divergence, okay, it's when price is going up like that and momentum is still going up. Meaning price is making lower highs while momentum is getting faster. It's called hidden. It's because it's very, it's not often seen. It's not normally happening. This normally happens in pullbacks on trends, not reversals. So when we say normally happens on pullbacks. Remember what I said earlier about the 80-20 principle. When are we trending? Less time. Hidden divergence happens less often because the conditions are less. It's really important to know these things. Let's talk about going down, right? You're making lower lows and then we make higher lows, prices, but momentum is still going faster down. Prices are making higher lows Momentum is making lower highs or lower lows in this situation. Okay? So let's just take away and make a summary of this. 80% of the time, you're going to see differential divergence. 20% of the time, you're going to see hidden divergence. Which one do you think is more important to learn? Anybody have an answer to that? Vincenzo says differential. Al says differential. Okay. It happens more often. Exactly. Vincenzo nailed it. It's because it's happening more often, so you need to be aware of something more frequently. Like, if you're only spending time focusing on stuff that's really not a big deal, you're wasting your time as a trader. A lot of times people get stuck in the the, the finding the magic potion 
or you know rubbing Aladdin's lamp and hoping that hey, I'm going to develop the most most amazing system that nobody knows about. If you just learn to focus on what the market's doing and telling you and why it's doing it, you, you'll become a better trader a lot faster. I can assure you that. And when we look at divergence, if we know that the markets are oscillating with inside day ranges 80% of the time and differential divergence happens 70 to 80% of the time, why would we ever want to spend the majority of our efforts looking at hidden divergence? It's not that you shouldn't know it. It's that it's not something that I would focus as a primary. Okay, so let me kind of go in here for a second and show you some examples. Let's take a look at differential. Here's an example of price making lower lows and momentum making higher lows. Okay, we have the warning dots plotting on our charts and then as soon as divergence confirms, it automatically plots the arrows in real time. This is another example of price making higher highs with warning dots and then as soon as momentum makes a lower high and confirms we get the divergence reversal. Our software automatically tells you in advance when the dots are happening and when the arrows are happening on confirmed divergence. You never have to draw divergence ever again. And that's why I love this software so much is because it's automatic divergence. It's automating the lines, it's automating the warning dots, it automates the signals, everything. The only thing you need to do is understand what it's telling you, which we train you on. Hidden divergence, a little more difficult to see because it doesn't happen all the time, right? Confirmed divergence happens when price is making lower highs, momentum is making higher highs, and vice versa for the longs. Now, I'd like to spend more time teaching you this because it's going to give you more trading opportunities in more realistic conditions but our software does both automatically so you don't have to now I wanna I wanna go to the charts okay I wanna go to the charts I wanna spend some time looking at some charts for a second I've picked four different futures markets we have two futures trading rooms we can load stocks we could load Forex tell me if you're a futures Forex or a stock trader that'll help me Give me the breakdown, or if you're all of the above. Just type in, yeah. Got some Forex traders, got some futures traders in here. I'll load some Forex markets after. Please know this for all of you Forex traders in here. If you can get data on the platform, our software works identifiably. It's, the, it's no different. So if you're looking at stocks, futures, or Forex interchangeably, if you're a day trader, or a scalper, or a swing trader, or an investor, it doesn't matter. The software will plot. It will show you everything. I've just chosen intraday futures markets because they're moving, and we run futures trading rooms. Our software is universal across global assets and any time frames, any bar types. So it doesn't matter what you're trading, okay? Now I want to I want to pull up an example of uh, this market here for a second, and I just want to basically show you down at the bottom here. We've got a dialog box that helps you understand the current condition, which we'll talk about structure bias in a second. You'll also see here that we've got warning identifiers that tell you whether or not you've got divergence on the MACD or the histogram, which is super, super neat. More importantly, though, it's all this automatic plotting of the lines and the arrows. This took a year to develop. It was not something that just was sped into development. It's There's a lot of math that goes on in the software, and there's a lot of room for error if done incorrectly, which we were able to do very effectively, and we're very proud of the development on that because it's something that took a very long time to master. And what's really, really important here is that you understand that you're going to get divergence happening on any market, on any time frame. It's whether or not you should be trading it. Okay, now I would like to walk you through that we've got a drop down that allows you to confirm the different types of divergences. You can control everything on here. You can set structure. You can turn structure on. You can display the divergences or turn them on or off. And, uh, 
and we'll get into some of the other settings. I'm just going to go in here and, and put structure on here for a second. And you're going to be able to see the difference between oscillating and trending conditions. Okay. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because the way we design software is for, for user-friendly application. Um, you've probably got other trading systems or you're probably using other indicators, not just this. And if you're going to use something, it should be fast and efficient and be very easy to manipulate. My goal here is to show you really the bread and butter as to what we want to do with this tool because ultimately it's really important to know when you should be trading divergence and when you shouldn't. Okay, And since we're looking at uh, the structure here, I want to show you the difference. The difference between trends and oscillation. I'm just going to put a T. It's going to be a, this is a, a, a failed trend. This is a failed trend. This is a trend. This is a short-term trend. This is a trend that's happening right now that's broken. And anytime you see gray, it's an oscillation. Oscillation. I'm just going to put an O around the grays. Okay. And this is dynamic to every market that you trade on. So if we did this right now, this is crude on a 2,500 volume. That's equivalent to like a three or a five minute chart. Okay. And I want you to make note of the fact that you only want to be trading trends under certain conditions. The majority of divergence trading is best suited for oscillating markets. If you're going to be trading in divergence in trending conditions, be very careful, and I have specific rules for this. Okay, so let's kind of go back here. Just looking at this chart, what do you see here as more advent? Like, do you see more gray or do you see more colors? There's more gray, isn't there? Let's go over here and just basically show you other markets. I'm going to look at a Renko chart. We've got structure on, okay? Do you see here? What do you see here on this Renko chart? How many trends do you see here? More gray, isn't it? We have a built-in trend algorithm that maps this stuff out for you. I'm going to just turn it on here. And uh, we'll reload the chart so you can really see where this is coming from. Because we have a built-in trend algorithm that will depict structure. So you'll know if the market's trending or not. It's just going to calculate the data. So we'll just give it a second. And uh, the reason this is super important here is because we've built in a trend indicator that allows you to, uh, to see whether or not you're making lower lows or lower highs. You don't need to have it on. Our software does it automatically for you. It paints the background gray or green or red. My goal is to show you that you only need to be learning when to trade oscillation. Oscillation. If you know that in 80% of the time, the market is oscillating, and divergence is best suited for oscillation, then we need to just spend time focusing on when to be ready and when not to be ready. And in situations where the market is trending, you must have a rule or be aware of what to do and what not to do, and we do have rules for that. Okay, Because if I go in here and I just pull up this chart here, and I say, well, why did this divergence work and that one fail? Or why did that one fail? Or why did this one fail? If I go here and turn on the structure, okay, there's a reason why we don't trade divergences in trends versus oscillation. If I go back here and I take a look at gold, okay, and, you know, and I'll just put uh, more days on the chart here so we can see this. Six days. Going to load a little bit more days for gold. It's a slower market, okay? And uh, the reason I'm showing you this is because every market's different. Every market's different. We had a big trend here. And uh, I'm going to go in here and see if we can go and turn the uh, 
I'm just going to turn some things on here so we can actually go in and do this. The, and the reason for this, guys, is so that you understand that it doesn't matter which market. I'm going to basically put no optimization on this. this is just, and we're just going to load this for a second because it's going to go back and plot all the divergences on the chart. You have the ability to enhance the efficiency if you're loading lots of charts and order flow charts and stuff like that. Uh, essentially what we want to do is we just want to be able to be aware of all the divergences on or off. And you're going to see there's divergences on the chart in many different locations. But that's not a trading strategy. That's just software plotting stuff on your chart. The goal of using software to enhance your trading abilities to make better decisions around risk management is to know the best times to use them and to know why and when we should be using them. And that's what I want to do today. I want to basically explain to you rules around divergence trading. Because you can learn the user manuals and you can go in and you can learn all the features. I don't want this to be a feature webinar. I want this to be a strategy webinar. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to bring this up. And this is where I would really encourage you to start taking some notes. Divergence with trends. This is a rules list. This is not an information list. This is a rules list. If you're going to trade divergence and you want to build a trading system or you want to just take the VM divergences, apply it to what you're doing and start trading divergence or use it to enhance your other setups, I would really encourage you to write these rules down or take a screenshot. So let's talk about divergence with trends. And as we know, divergence with trends happens 20 to 30% of the time. So, we never, ever, ever take the first divergent signal in a trend. Rule number one. Okay? Rule number two is we always look to trade the second or third signal off of the same anchor point. So, I'll give you an example. Do you notice how there's there's one line here and two lines here? Okay, they're both connected to this anchor point right here. The reason we don't take the first signal is because that's like trying to stop a freight train. If we go and we study some of the charts, you're going to see that normally nine times out of ten, the first divergent signal will will fail in trends. Take a look down here. This is a trend. See the green background? Whenever the market is trending, there's a time in which the train must slow down before the market reverses. So picture a freight train at max speed going this way. It starts putting on its brakes here and then the train stops here. Right? That's the same thing with the trend in the financial markets. The market's going to start trending. That's the freight train. The brakes got put on here, and it started to slow down to stop there. That's divergence. That's what divergence is measuring. It's when the train puts its brakes on, and then when do we decide to get off the train? or get on the train in terms of a trade. So when we see this, the last thing we ever want to do is try to stop the train by ourselves on the first attempt. Like that's that's just the most important thing I could ever teach divergence traders. You never take the first trade signal, ever. And if you are, I would really, really hope that you would to consider stopping if you're struggling as a divergence trader. Because I can almost assure you that will change the space for you. We always need to make sure that you're using the same anchor point because we're using the price anchor to momentum to measure price and to measure momentum changes. Okay? And so it must always be the same anchor. That's the difficult part. Like when you try to draw that manually, when the market's unfolding and momentum is moving and your oscillators are moving, this is where the error, the room of error comes in with traders because what ends up happening is you don't know if you're drawing it off the right high, you don't know if you're using the right oscillator peak or valley. That's why automated divergence took so long to code, but it is so effective when it's done right. 
And in situations where you're using automated software to plot divergence, like the VM divergence system is, we don't care if it's regular or hidden, because regular or hidden, regular is going to be 80% of the time, 20% of the time, regardless, it's the same rules, regardless of the type of divergence. So if you're in an oscillating market and you do get hidden divergence, very, very rare occasions, but it could happen. And therefore, know that it's you treat it the same. Now, the highest probability is always the third divergence signal or further. You can take trades on the second. The third is the highest. The fourth is like, wow. If you're getting an anchor point and you're getting one, two, three, Four, and then you get an opportunity to take that trade, man. That's exciting. It doesn't happen very often. It just means it was a bigger train slowing down. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Give me a yes if that makes sense. These are rules. These are not just information. This is like when you want to build a trading system, this is a, this is a trading strategy webinar. You may yes if that makes sense to you guys. Let's go and take a look at some charts. Let's take a look at crude oil on this market. Or let's take a look at the NASDAQ, actually. Okay. Let's just take a look at this. Actually, I'm going to do this and put swing trend parameters to 2, and we're going to change this. Give it a second here. I'm just going to reload this. And the reason for that is because the five-minute chart is... I'm not a huge component of time charts, depending on if you're looking at time-based charts. We're going to give it a second to load. It's just calculating. Okay. Let's take a look at this, right? Like, that's why I don't like time charts, and I'll just explain. That's, that's the reason. Because time charts have a very hard time in measuring structure as opposed to volume or as opposed to range or Ranko. Right, it's very difficult to ascertain data, and uh, price-based charts are better. Vincenzo says price-based charts are better. So you're talking about time, or are you talking about like volume or tick charts? What are the blue dots? Joe said the blue dots are warning dots. That's when divergence starts to happen. So do you see here right now, like we're getting warning dots. That's because this is potential divergence. Do you see down here? It says MACD BB's bearish hidden P. That means potential. It means that there's potentially a divergence setup about to happen. Okay? The arrows are confirmed divergence. Now, remember what I said about the trends. Now, I'm going to go look at other types of markets here in a second, but we'll just use the NASDAQ on a five-minute chart for a second. Based off the rules that I said, yes, there are uh, no settings for the dots are potential. It's all driven by the structure and the momentum, Joe. You can turn them on or off if you don't want them there. Is this signal happening in an oscillating structure or a trending structure? Based off what you're seeing on the chart, the background at that bar, is it a green background or a gray background? It's a green. Take a look below. We have a trend just started. We don't take the first setup in a trend. Right there is the second divergence signal off the same anchor point. Very small trade. Let's take a look here. This divergence is in an oscillating structure. Therefore, we would wait to see if it gives us divergence in a confirmed environment. We'll talk about oscillating in a second. I want to go to a different type of chart. Let's take a look at the euro. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Take a look at this divergence trade right here, down at the bottom. Is this divergence trade in a trend? No, it's not. Let's go and find trends. Do you see how hard of a time a divergence trader would have been? Do you see how hard a, a divergence trader would have to try to short this, to try to short that? Think about this. Market's going up strongly. 
That's what this is telling us. Trend. Why would we want to short strong markets? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't mean you can't catch a couple ticks, but you're going to have a harder time stopping the market. This is divergence trade signal number one. This is divergence trade signal number one. Remember, anchor point, new anchor point. Do not confuse the difference between divergence one and divergence one over here. These are two separate types of divergences. This is, they're both differential, but this is the, this one here is to there, and then it ended. And then this one started here, and it ended. Therefore, this is not a tradable scenario. We would never trade those setups. You don't trade divergence signals on the first setups in trending conditions. Take a look at every single other divergence trade here in an oscillating market. Divergence signal number one, divergence signal number two, divergence signal number three, divergence signal number four. Is the background gray? Or red or green? Gray equals oscillation. Oscillation equals good trading conditions for divergence. Oscillation happens 80% of the time. Therefore, good trading conditions 80% of the time. Does everybody start to see why I'm explaining it like this? Let's go in here and start talking about oscillation. Because I'd rather t spend more time discussing good conditions for trading versus bad. Here's another list of rules. Another chance to write some really good aha nuggets down. We can always take the first trade signal in divergence. So unlike a trend, the market is oscillating. How do we know it's oscillating? Everybody always asks me this question, and I have an amazing rule for you. The question is, how do we know when oscillation is happening to the hard right edge, right? Nobody ever knows that until looking back and saying, oh, there's a range. There's a way to do this. And it's, it's probably one of the biggest takeaways that I've ever learned in the last 10 years of trading. And it's how to identify oscillation immediately on the fly. And the answer to that is right here. And I'm going to just map out the two scenarios. If you make a higher high, right, and then you automatically go to a lower low, that's the beginning of a range. If you make a lower low and automatically go to a higher high, that's the beginning of oscillation. If you make a higher high like that, all the way back down to a lower low, like that, that's oscillation. Or if you're making a lower low, and then you go all the way back up, and then all the way back down, the beginning of the oscillation started here, not down here. It's about knowing how to identify oscillating rules. And if you give an example here, I'll just show you, I'll show you why this is a great example, right? We went from higher high to immediate lower low. That is the beginning of this entire range right here. But we would never know that coming in here. This is all unknown to us in the hard right edge. So how do we work around that? Well, we pay attention to structure. That's the really, really, really good way of looking at divergence trading. Now, that being said, we can look to trade the first, the second, or the third divergence from the same anchor point. Doesn't matter because we're trading any signal in oscillating markets. It can be regular or hidden. So the rule is 80% of the time, you've got excellent trading conditions, and you've got more opportunity, and you've got a higher probability of the trades working. Who in here wants to trade divergence in trending conditions, and who in here wants to trade divergence in oscillating conditions? Just give me a... An O for oscillation or a T for a trend? I'll 
Apostolation, Jeff says, yeah, absolutely. George says, absolutely. <laughs> Brad's putting in their trend because he's kidding. You know, I know you're kidding. Let's take a look at some charts. Do you see here how, uh, and I'm not here to tell you that every signal is going to work. What I am here to tell you is that the probability of the trade signals working increases drastically. Like this signal is one of those situations where it just started a trend and we got the signal. If you were following the rules of what I just explained, we would not take it despite that it worked. We would take that one. This one here, it you would take it and this was a stop out. Okay? The rules of this one would be we would take it and it was a win. We would take it and it was a win. We would take it and it was a win. We would take it and it was a win. So you got one missed trade, one stop out, and you got all these other trades that meet the criteria to that. Now that's, I don't like doing that. That's one chart. That's one bar type. All right, I don't like doing that, guys. Let's go to a different market, different different scenario. Okay, let's go in here to uh, the gold on a range chart. And uh, let's just go back and add some days here. Let's just take a look. Now, I'm going to be teaching you a way to enhance this even more. That's the whole purpose of using volume. But if you're not somebody using volume, and you're somebody that just wants to look at adding divergence to your trading strategy toolbox, right, or anything like that, let's just go back and just mark up the charts based off what we're talking about here. This is a great example. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to go right from the hard right edge. And we're going to go right. And I just pick gold. I don't trade. Uh, I, gold is on a 10 tick bar. But, you know, I, I'm not a huge. Uh, like I don't trade divergence on gold that much. But it is a great market for it because it is a reversal market. Um, I just, my, my preference is the oil market and, and, and that sort of thing. But I'll just explain this here. So I just want you to tell me yes or no. Based off what I've explained Oscillating market, can we take that trade or not? Answer is yes. So let's just put a check mark. What about this one here? Yes. The answer is yes. Okay. So actually what I'm going to do, just because I can't draw on the chart and do this, I'm going to just draw a, a cursor, vertical line. So I'm just going to put a yes, and I'm going to put a yes. So any blue lines get yeses, and any red lines are, and, and I'm just going to, we're just not going to trade, we're not going to put a mark on the chart. Um, so let's, let's take a look at this one. Are we allowed to trade this one, the first one here? Let's just do this one. Based off the rules I was telling you, are we allowed to take that trade? Jose says no. Anybody else? Rob says no. Okay, so I'm going to just put a little line here. Let's just draw that like that. What about that one? For those that were listening on the trend rules. Christian says yes. Vincenzo says maybe. Well, you have a decision to make. And let me just do this here for a second. Remember the rules are we can take the second or third div signal from the same anchor point. So the answer is technically yes. Because this is the same anchor point. Take a look. Same anchor point, and it's measuring the second divergence signal. So technically, yes, you could take that trade. That would be an allowable short. Okay? So I'm going to put a little line in the sand right here. Okay? Let's continue on. When you're unsure, it's a no. And you know what, Venture? That's a great question. When you have a, If you're not able to identify yourself on the fly, yeah, I am taking that trade. No trade is sometimes a good trade, eh? Let's continue on. What about here, guys? Are we allowed to take that trade? I like to engage the traders in the room because I'm the one that's asking you. I'm teaching you, and then you're telling me if you remember it. This trade right here, are we allowed to take that? Is it a trend or is it an oscillating market? Rob says no. See, Morty says no. You're absolutely right. We're not allowed to take that trade. And the reason for that is because that's the first divergent signal in an uptrending market. 
Even if it worked, it doesn't matter. The rules are in place for a reason. We don't know that that freight train is going to stop there. Let's continue on. What about this one? Are we allowed to take that trade? The answer is no. Let's continue on. See how we're getting warning dots? But we didn't get any divergence. That's because that's where momentum was waning, but price continued on. Let's continue on here. What about right there? Are we allowed to take that trade? Answer is no. Good thing, because he'd be taking some heat. What about that one? Remember how I said hidden divergence happens in a trend? That's a pullback. That's hidden divergence. Rob says no. You're absolutely right. So let's continue on. You say, yeah, but it worked. I say, I don't care. What about that one? I'm doing this for a reason, guys. I know this stuff. What about that one? Can we take it? Rob says yes. Can I ask why? Rob says yes, it's oscillation. You're absolutely right. First signal in an oscillating market. You're allowed to take that trade. It's good for at least two to one. Let's continue on. What do I hear? See how that, that background changed color on the signal arrow? Are we allowed to take that? First signal in a trend. Red background. Answer is no. Okay. Let's continue on. You see, yeah, but I could have got six ticks. Doesn't matter. What about this one here? First signal, oscillating market. The answer is yes. That's the very first stop out. We go here. We're going to label that red. Okay, let's continue on. What about here? The answer is yes. Right there. Okay. Hold on a sec here, guys. Let's keep going here. I'm just going to keep going. Let's find it right there. Are we allowed to take that signal? The answer is no. We're almost at the site. We're almost we're we're not even halfway into the chart, but we're gonna go we're gonna do this together, guys. We're gonna do this together. It's the whole point of the exercise. What about right here? Are we allowed to take that trade? The answer is yes. I'm gonna help you guys out. We're gonna do this together. Okay, so that was a stop out. Let's just put this as red. Let's bring that over here. That was a stop out. Okay, let's continue on. Let's continue on. What about that? Not allowed to take that. That's a that's a trend trade fail we're not going to do that even if it is the low of the market you say oh yeah but i could have caught the low try that every single day and run a business like that and that's going to be a challenge for you what about here first signal no second signal in this trend the answer is yes we're allowed to take that trade right here this is allowable this is actually one of those situations where we get the train slowing down more and more and more and uh let's just put that here that's the allowable trade so there was a beautiful short there off that. This one here, another trade. We're allowed to take that one long. Okay. So it says, is the entry on the close of the bar with the arrow? Absolutely. Absolutely, Joe. Yeah. So let's continue on. Yes, we can take that trade. And yes, we can take that trade. It's the second anchor point. Uh, actually, no, we can't. So this trade here 
would have been a situation where you would have been in one of those random situations where the trend started on the next bar. So let's just assume you're in on this one and you got stopped out. I'm just going to put stop out on this one here just because I think it's important to be completely transparent with, uh, you know, real life scenarios. If you're looking at, you know, I, I can't stand the, the, the cherry picking stuff. So let's just do this. Okay. You're not taking that. You're already in this one. And uh, this is a new div signal off the new anchor, so no. So that would have been a stop out. Right here, this is a, a long trade that you would not have had a red background on until on the next bar. Could have grabbed six ticks. What's the stop at? But one of them could have had Lyme disease. <laughs> yeah, exactly. More. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. We'll go through it and we'll, we'll tally up the, the efficiency of this just on gold alone on the range chart. Um, let's see here and right there. So not allowed to take that trade because it's the first signal in trend. You say, oh, I missed it. Doesn't matter. Let's continue on. The answer is e can't take the first signal in this trend either. So we'll just continue on and I'm just I just want to mark these up on this one market so that when we go back and we add the math up together guys and this is the fun part of the job right it's kind of like manual testing to see even on a short period does it even want to give you time to look at yeah Morty we'll go over the stops in a second we'll go over the stops and the targets in a second because that's the second step right whenever you look at building a trading strategy or even taking an indicator and identifying is it a good trading system to consider you start with efficiency of the signal, and then you look at execution and management second. Because if you don't have enough signals that produce a winning percentage, you can't you can't ascertain your maximum favorable excursion or your max adverse excursion, which is you know what's my stop and what's the likelihood of my targets getting hit, right? Which will which comes from my ba my background in statistics, but we'll get into that after. Let's take a look. This one's a no. So no here, no here. Even though it works, doesn't matter. You're going to lose some winning signals sometimes. The market's not always going to give you every single time, right? Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's continue. Let's continue. Warning dots. We're right there. So let's go back and tally this up. This is the fun part. me a sec here. Let's just grab a piece of paper here. Let's grab the other notepad that I had. Dear strategy notes. We're going to just write this down. We're just going to put wins, losses, and then we'll talk about we'll talk about the stops to targets because it's not really the most important part yet. And we'll talk about why in a second, but we will do that. Losses. I'm just tallying up an example on gold to show you how we would go about doing this. So let's go back. I'll bring this over, and then we'll we'll do it together. And I'm just going to keep note of the fact. And uh, that's what makes this webinar so fun is we actually get to test strategy efficiency. Okay, so then we'll go into how do we even improve it after. Let's just count the blue lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. So we had eight wins, okay, and we had one, two, three stop outs. Three stops. And then how many mistrades? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, okay, and twelve. We missed 12 trades on purpose. Some winners, some losers. The reason for them is they don't meet the rules for proper divergence conditions. Okay? Anybody in here want to give me the math on an 8 to 3 ratio? Anybody here that uh, likes to contribute? Win-loss ratio. Grab that. 3 divided by 8, 37.50, so we're going to look at minus 10. <laughs> so we're going to take 8 divided by 3. You're looking at 3 into 8 is 37 times 100. So you're looking at 37% loss, minus 100. So a 62.5 win rate.
So that's a 62.5% win ratio. Okay? Which means if your winning rate is above 50%, you need a minimum of 51% win ratio at 1 to 1 reward to risk to break even or to make money. This is starting to see where I'm going here. So I'm comparing wins to losses. I'm looking at my win-loss ratio. I'm not looking at wins to how many trades opportunities. I'm looking at win-loss ratio. So I'm looking at there's three losses and eight wins we took, and the rest were just no, not trades. I mean, if you build an automated system like that, or if you were to build a strategy, you're not looking at – you don't factor your trade stats into how many trades you could have taken. You, you, fa you factor your ratio into – basically wins versus losses, right? Because normally you're not taking these X's, right? This is an example of why divergence trading gives you more exposure. Why do you think we have more opportunity? Uh, why do you think there's a higher win rate just in terms of trade, ex uh, trade uh, frequency? This would be a more of a, a good breakdown if we look at eight, if we look at eight to three, in summary, we have eight wins versus three losses out of eight and three is 11 out of 12. So it's 11 and 12, that's 23. So that's 11 total trades valid out of 23, right? But out of that 50% exposure, you have a 62% win rate, which is amazing just on a very short period of time. Now, I'm not saying that anybody here that's new to math or new to statistical strategy development would understand that. That's why you're here to learn. What I'm trying to tell you is that warrants serious attention to want to go in and test it on other markets. You could test that on gold. We could do the exact same thing on the euro for the Renko. We could take the oil market and turn it into a Renko or a range, right? Like they not, I personally don't like minute charts. That's my own perspective. Okay. Now you're asking me, you're asking me stops to targets. Okay. Stops to targets. Normally what's ending up happening if we go back here. Okay. Normally you're going to have your stop loss. Okay. Normally you're going to have your stop loss around the same size as your ATR, or maybe one and a half ATR, okay? So if this is 10 ticks, maybe you're at a 15 tick stop, okay? Maybe a, a little bit larger, right? So if we take a look at 10 ticks right here, that's 10 ticks, right? It's 20 ticks, depending on how big you want your stop loss. You might want to do that. And if you were to look at, and this is where you study, you study that on your, on your trades, right? Like there's one to one, it's one and a half to one, right? Let's just assume one to one on this. Okay. Just like that. Let's go back over here and take a look at the other trades. Okay. This one here, very simple. You can see that if you even had a 10 tick stop, you would have gotten two to one on that. Maybe an, maybe an 11 tick stop was one tick variance, but I would say probably a 15 tick stop would be ideal here. Just one and a half to one, right? So 15 tick stop would be about right there. So if I look at just a one to one ratio right here, that's one and a half to one right there. Got it, okay. Let's take a look at this trade setup right here. Let's just do maybe a 15 tick stop. Right, so that is your entry right there. Let's bring this over. Did we get it? Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm not saying 15 is your maximum number. I'm saying this is just an example, guys. Right, I'm just looking at, you know, the bar size. I'm just taking something so simple as the bar size. If you're using 
volume charts, I would take factor of the average true range. If you're using Renko, I would use the bar size plus X number of ticks. If you're using range, I would use bar size plus X number of ticks. With time-based charts, it's very difficult because you have these really large spikes in, in candles over a five-minute period. Your ATR is so large, it makes it very difficult to ascertain strategy development, right? So let's go over here. Let's take a look at this. No, 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 no. Let's no, no, no. Let's keep going right here. If we take a look at this, the size of the bar is very, very simple. So let's just say one and a half. Let's just bring that up and let's double that up. Okay, so this one would have got a one to one. Okay. Let's take a look at this one right here. If we're looking at this one right here from this bar, can you show it on a Renko, Christian? Yeah, well, that's a great example because the last webinar I did, it was all on Renko. This one's on range. We can look at that in a second. So there's the bar type plus half of that. So let's continue on. There's one to one. Would have got maybe one and a half to one out of that. I don't like to take the whole move. I like to see, you know, realistically a one to one minimum just to see if you're breaking even or getting more money. Right, this is this is how you look at that. You can't just always cherry pick the best setups. You got to look at the realistic aspect of trading, and then look at your maximum favorable excursion. And let's just continue here. Let's go here. Boom, right there. Let's just bring this down. Let's do that, and let's bring this up. This is normally not something you would do in a sales webinar. This is something you do in a strategy class or on a in a trade room, but. Uh, Right, so that one you might have got high ticked, depending on how tight your stop is, right? If you look at that, uh, that bar right there, well, let's take a look at any size bar. That's 10 ticks, uh, that's 10 tick bar, maybe one and a half. You might, you might have got high ticked on that. That might have been a loss. Looks great in hindsight, but depending on how tight your stop loss, that might have been a loss for you, right? And, and I'm not here to, to, uh, to, uh, give false hopes or dreams here. I'm here to show you how to become a winning trader, right? Take a look. That retest would have kept you in anyways, and you could have gotten at least one-to-one -one or two-to-one on that trade right there, right? Just like that. Let's continue on. That, that was a stop out for sure. And, uh, you know, right here, let's just bring this over. Just like that. Right. Let's continue on. Let's continue on. Let's continue on. Continue on. Did we get any more here? I'm not sure. No, we didn't. So if we just look at all of these setups that we just went and took a look at, and we look at this, and this is a study of what we call maximum adverse or maximum favorable excursion. You look at every single strategy setup that you get, okay? You look at every single strategy setup that you get, and you ask yourself, with X period of stop, could you have got a one and a half to one? In every setup except for one, I think every setup except for one, you got at least one and a half to one. There was one and a half to one here, one and a half to one there. Let's continue on. You got one and a half to one here. Let's continue on here. This one right here was one to one. Maybe you would have got a little bit more on that one, but one to one. But at bare minimum, you got a one to one on this, one and a half to one on this one. So if you were to basically set a risk reward ratio of, you know, maybe a, a 15 tick stop to a, 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 you know, a 35 tick or a 45 tick target, or maybe a, a 12 tick stop to a 24 tick target, depending on what you're looking at, if you're using a 10 tick range bar, that might be a great, great example for you. Um, but this is, this is where I'm not 100% aware of every market that you trade and, uh, and, and on the time frames that you trade. So it's really about understanding your markets and also understanding your, uh, your ability to trade those markets, right? I think the consecutive wins versus consecutive losses is it is consecutive wins versus it is a good it is a good statistic yes and and here's the thing right i'm just showing you how to manually back test the concepts of what i'm teaching you just in this demonstration if we went back over here and did this exact same concept to let's say a renko it's the same rules right it's the exact same rules we look at this win that was a stop out win 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 
if we can see that right out the gates, that's a you don't take that trade. That's a trend trade. This one here would have been a stop out. This one here is a win, right? Like it's the same concept. This is just the euro on a 10 tick Renko, which is this technically it's the same size as the range chart. This is a five brick Renko 10 tick reversal. So the reversal is the uh, same as a range bar. Okay, it's the same size. And uh, that's because we trade the euro in our trade rooms on this uh, size of a range bar, Renko conversion. Um, but if we just go back and did that on every single setup, you know, we can look at, you know, are we allowed to take these versus are we allowed to take those? Um, you know, the, the breakdown of what I just said is, is equally true across every market. Now, if you were to say go to another market like crude oil on a volume chart, you're not going to get as many signals. And if I just go in here and I, I, I basically turn this on, you're not going to get as many signals on variable range charts. Optimized for speed, I'm going to put none. Now, let me explain why that is. You will get more statistical strategy setups on Renko and range charts compared to volume or time. The reason for that is what we consider variable range charts. So if you have a, a volume, that's a variable range chart, meaning there's some bars are, are bigger than the others. Um, let me see here. So the reason you got a volume chart, some candles are larger than the others, right? Is there any, is, is, if there are a few signals we could always trade on multiple markets? Absolutely, you could. And, and here's the thing. If you're looking at volume or time-based charts, it's not to say you shouldn't follow the same direction. What I'm suggesting is you pay attention to the opportunity that your markets are producing and being able to identify them. Because I've noticed over time, like if we just take a look at this market right here, that's a trend trade signal. We don't take the first one. We would take the second. So this one would become valid. This is a this is a, a trade signal here on that bar right there. Okay, this one here. This is a valid setup right here. Okay, we take a look at these setups right here. First signal no. Second signal yes. This is one, second, third. Do you see how this is a situation where you would you would have taken the second one would have become a stop out. And if you were looking for an immediate re-entry, because some traders do that, you know, you know you have a valid system and just for whatever reason the market went against the first signal opportunity, you take the second. So this is an example of where that would be true. You would have got back in and that would have been a winning trade for you. Okay. This one would have been a stop out right here. Now, we haven't even looked at time of day. We haven't even looked at news. We haven't looked at any of that. I'm just showing you right now just based off of this market. That was a winning setup right here. Actually, no, we would have not taken that one because that's in a trend, one of those catch-22s. Here's a great setup on the volume chart right here in an oscillating market, huge trade. This one right here, trending condition. Unfortunately, we just don't take those in trending conditions. This one here, big trade. Now you say, well, what's my stop loss on this? Well, because it's a variable range, on markets like volume or time, what you do is you add ATR. You add an average true range. Because it's a variable range chart, you can't use a fixed stop. It doesn't make sense to do so. So in a situation like this where we get the setup, now take a look at this. This is a great example of a trend setup. First setup, no. Second setup, yes. Stop out. Third setup, right here. Do you see the freight train that we're trying to stop? And, and here's my rule. I personally, when I look at trends, I'm going to tell you my, my golden rule. And this is my own personal preference. I only trade the third setup in trends. Because I'd rather not take a trade versus take the best trade. I would rather take, I, even though that this is a second setup, I would not take this trade in real time. I would wait for the third div. And the reason for that is because trends are trends. I personally would rather just only take oscillating setups. And here's the thing. If you know you don't want to stop a freight train, how do you know when that train's ready to stop? Why not take the setup after the train has stopped? Take a look at this. This is a great example of that concept. 
Here's the train. It started to stop here. Wasn't ready to start. Wasn't ready to stop. It tried. It tried. It's getting ready at the station. Everybody got off at the station, and now that's where the opportunity is, right here. Like, if you're somebody that it's about trade efficiency and you just want to stack the odds on your favor at all times at the best best scenario, why even bother trading a trending system, a tr uh, an oscillating strategy in a trending environment? Right, like that, like that's like the best takeaway I could ever give you is to trade an oscillating strategy in oscillating markets. Trade a trend strategy in trend markets. And since the oscillating conditions are 80% of the time, you trade the divergence in the other 80% of the time. Like over here, even though this background is gray, it's because I don't have enough data loaded. That's a trend. Why would we ever want to take divergence? This is the freight train trying to stop. What doesn't make sense to do that? It makes sense to trade oscillating markets. If I just look at every single oscillating setup on this market alone, and let's just take that. That was a trend. Uh, let's just take this one right out because that's a trend. We wouldn't take it. Oscillating. Wouldn't take it. Just no trending conditions. Don't take any trend trades. Oscillating strategy. If you're just trading that, you got four trades, three wins, one loss. It's a 75% hit rate. Do you see where I'm going with that? Like if you were to sit down and you do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and I say, you know what, sh you know, I said, what's more important to you, taking trades or making money? And you're going to trade divergence in an 80% condition? It's really, really important to just realize the, the trader psychology around that and know that it's more important to take a strategy that it's best suited for those conditions. Like if I go and take a look at this trade example we did on the gold market and I just take away all the trend, all the trades that happen in trends, like you just go back here. Did we take any in trends? This one here, let's just take it away. Okay. So let's just move them out. So, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So this one here, right? So we might have lost a trade in that. It might have maybe hindered that a little bit. But I'd rather I'd rather teach you a consistent approach. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I'm missing one here. We're going here, one, two, three, four, five, six to one, two, three. You know, might have lost a little bit, but that's still 50%. 50% with a one and a half reward to risk. You're making money. And I'm here not to tell you how much money. I'm here to show you that that's how you look at divergence. This is a divergence webinar. Now, at the beginning of the webinar, I said that we have an added element of strategy to this. And this is a bonus to this webinar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just a rule of disclaimer, okay? We have held in the past webinars on this. This is for all of you new traders in here that have never been to a divergence webinar with Neural Street before. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put the the link to the YouTube channel. There's a there's a link in here, okay. I'm gonna put a link in here. Give me a second, guys. Okay, and I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna bring this up. Okay. Let's play this. Don't overcomplicate. Give it a trading. second here. Hey guys and gals, my name's Jason Bond. And and we're gonna take this and hit Bond. skip the ads, right? It's divergence. So we did a webinar on this. Had about 800 hits on that, and. Uh, it's not a webinar. This was an Ask Me Anything event. It was a three-hour class on divergence trading. And we back-tested all of these markets the exact same way I just did with gold. And we had 13 winning trades, two losers across one, two, three, four markets with an 85% winning rate with a one-to-one -one reward to risk. The reason I'm, I'm suggesting you pay attention to this is because every time I do a divergence webinar, 
we get traders come back saying, ever since learning your divergence methods, ever since implementing these rules, my winning rates have increased. I'm taking less trades, I'm making more money, and I've become more selective. I'm here to show you that today's webinar, plus last time I did this webinar, and this was August of last year, okay? the the same the same response is it's one of the best events we ever hold now why do i say this well because in this class i introduced using what we call volume profile <laughs> and we took what we did one step further and are you guys okay with me explaining this like we've already been here an hour and a half give me a yes if you're okay with me taking this one step further for those of you that are interested in the education side of this I don't want this to just be some sales webinar I want to teach you some really high quality volume and divergence concepts okay everybody says yes continue everybody's good on that because sometimes you get the traders in here they're like just show me what, how much it costs it's not about that it's I want to teach you how to make a really good income from taking some of these concepts and transverting them into your trading business okay so step one and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna circle what i'm about to teach you here is is a collective sum of my experience on this concept and step one is breaking down what we talked about trend versus oscillation right we've just spent the entire class talking about that which is really the the beginning <laughs> <clears throat> Brad says it's worth it for a lifetime access. Absolutely. So here's the cool part. Trend or oscillation. Well, we've already identified that oscillation is best. Right? That's what we've spent this entire <clears throat> market concept on. So we're looking at balanced markets. Okay, so we're looking at balanced markets. You could trade this but if you're looking to really increase probability, why would you want to add risk? You might miss some trade opportunities, but you add a level of risk that's, that, that most people are not aware of. Okay. The next step of this discussion is how can we use other aspects of trading to help make this even more effective? Well, the answer is using the profile. Okay, and the profile is is about using volume or market profile to support the trading decision that we talked about up here. Right, it's really about taking it one step further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a workspace here, and I'm going to bring up. Uh, we've talked about this, right? First signal oscillating signal we've talked about that I want to talk a little bit about using volume profile on the TPO software then we'll look at using it on maybe the developing software in fact what I'll do before we do this is I'm gonna pull up the other workspace and show you what I've I've prepared for you guys I've got a I've got two charts here I like to teach side by side it's real simple for me to do that and since we just spent the last time going over the gold trades let's just bring gold up here for a second We'll, we'll load gold because it makes sense to do so since we just spent time looking at all those setups on gold. Let's bring in gold. I mean, we could have done it on any other market. And I've got Renko and range here. Do you notice that? VPO and TPO is my favorite. Sometimes slower, but the trades come to me looking to expand on momentum trading. Yeah, Brad, not a problem. This is this is perfect concept. In fact, you can even use momentum inside the levels if you're choosing to time your entries. But we'll we'll get into that in a second. So we'll give it a second to load. You see, I'm loading a Renko chart and I'm loading a range chart. So we're gonna we're gonna look at both range on a 10 range, Renko on a 510 reversal, which is the equivalent to a 10 range. So what's interesting is we just did that now. If I go over here, I'm going to switch this to gold. So we see how it's, con I mean, and you see how it says the print profiler. We have a tool called the print profiler that looks at developing profiles. And we're going to talk about that in a second. If I go here, I'm going to pull up gold. So we're going to look at gold on uh, Ninja Traders order flow volume profile tool. So if you're not using any of our indicators, you could use the real time volume profile. Or if you're looking at 
the TPO distribution software that we trade, all three of them will provide you the profile, some of them in a different way, but you can get where I'm going with this, okay? Now, I want to go back to this slide for a second. The question on the top here says, step two, does the volume profile or the market profile support the bias? When I say bias, I mean taking a reversal for divergence trades. And why do you think that is? Let me just grab this cursor here for a second. The profile is like that, right? Maybe it's the wrong choice of colors. Let's go to a yellow. So you got a volume profile, looks like that, right? We've got a value area high, we got a value area low. For those of you that are completely new to volume and completely new to market profile, I would, also, I would almost assume that this might be overkill for you. Please stick around in this class or any upcoming webinars or join our classrooms because you're going to learn a master's degree in trading with us, okay? Here's the thing. When you're above, yeah, Morty, we've got the whole thing recorded for you. So let's talk about above the value area high, below the value area low. Anything up here in a profile is considered expensive, okay? Anything down here in a profile is considered cheap, okay? This is just straightforward 101 profile understanding. So it says, using the 30-minute TPO market volume profile, it allows us to be on the right side of the higher time frame when taking trades on a smaller time frame strategy. So we've talked about entering on a divergence trading system. Okay. And ultimately, how can we use a higher time frame volume or market profile chart to help increase the, the efficiency and the expectancy of a strategy? And that's exactly what we're going to do here. One and two. One, it says, when taking by divergence setups, we aim to be on the value side of the profile. So that would mean that if we got any divergence trades to buy at or below the value area low, that would increase, it should increase efficiency. When taking sell divergence setups, at or above the value rate high, that should increase efficiency. The goal is to not take reversal trades in the noise of the market. So for anybody in here that's looking at a volume profile, a value area, a market profile, or any type of profile distribution, the goal is to look at the divergence software, the VM divergences, and when you get your divergence setup, use a profile to help see if you can enhance the setup's efficiency of working. Okay. Now, we're going to take a look at another chart because that's the TPO software. We sell the TPO software on our website. If you're somebody that's wanting to use that, you could. If you want to use the Print Profiler software, we have the Print Profiler. The Print Profiler looks at volume profile, but it also provides what we call developing profile. So the reason we built the developing profile is so that you could go and back test your strategy setups. Now let me explain this, because it's the same thing. This is the value area, and let me just grab this here. We don't take trades in here. We only take divergence setups expensive or cheap. Expensive or cheap. We want to be buying and selling reversals when they're expensive or cheap. We don't want to be trading in the noise. And the print profiler or the TPO software is just one way to, to look at where the noise is versus where the extremes are. Okay. So let me kind of go into the charts for a second. If I go into gold and I look at this chart right here, okay, this is an example of us using other software to produce 
a developing profile. Like if I turn the developing profile on, that's part of our volume profile suite in our print profiler software. What this is, if, and, and let me kind of explain why you'd want to use a developing to back test. If you go in here to the visual concepts, take a look. That's normally how volume profile is displayed on a chart. The problem with that is that's, that's only real-time data. So when you look at the volume profile, take a look at the value rate low right now. The value rate low is technically right here. Well, if I turn that off, that's exactly where the current developing profile is. But if you take a look, the value rate low was moving down throughout the day. So we have no way to know where the value area was in the past if we're only using current day profiles. If you're only doing real time profile analysis, which is one of the reasons why if you were trying to back test, you would not be able to see the extremes. That's why I've got this off and I've got developing on because we can see throughout the course of this 30 minute time frame where we were expensive and where we were cheap. And, and here's the fun part. I can put on the data selectors in here into the indicator section. Let's go back here. And I can see throughout each day where the market was expensive, where it was cheap, where we're getting cheap. Market was basically reversing outside of expensive price levels. So up here, and over here, down here, okay? Now, why am I explaining it like this? Well, it's really difficult to go from a higher time frame down to finding your trades. It's not difficult to go from your trade setups and look to see if you're actually in a good place on the bigger picture. But you might say, Sean, I don't own the print profiler software. I don't own the TPO software. The TPO software does things a little bit different. The TPO software allows us to merge our daily profiles. I'm just merge it. So there's our, our daily profiles for the market profile software. But more importantly, it allows us to basically split them so that we can ultimately look at where we are as the profiles expanded. So if I were to take a look at gold today, turn split off, I could easily see that anything above here or below here, cheap, expensive, cheap, expensive, cheap, expensive. As the profiles change throughout the day, cheap, expensive. Therefore, if I got any diversion, divergence to buy, I would only want to be buying when we're below these profiles. I would only want to be selling when we're above those profiles. Same thing over here. I would only want to be buying cheap, cheap, or selling expensive, expensive. Buying cheap, selling expensive. Buying cheap and selling expensive. I would be looking inside my entry chart and making sure that when I'm about to take a trade, I would look at the market profile chart and say, am I cheap or expensive? Or am I in the noise? Now, if you're not using our volume or market profile software and you're somebody that's just new to our environment, NinjaTrader has a basic version of market profile volume profile. I've loaded the defaults here on purpose. It says order flow volume profile. If I go into NinjaTrader or if I go into, maybe you're using another platform and you want to use our indicators in conjunction. It says order flow volume profile tool set. I've turned everything to transparent because I don't need all the extra noise. I just want to see the profile and it will only give you the current profile. It will not give you the developing profile in the past, right? So you'll be able to do use this in real time but you would not be able to use it to backtest, where you could use our other software to backtest. Okay, so that's kind of why I wanted to show you these breakdowns and show you why I'm about to teach you this. Because let's go in here and take a look. Let's go here and workspace. So let's just go here. That's gold 0419. I'm going to make sure that I go to the other workspace and do that. Let's go to this. This is the 0419 range chart. I'm going to add days to it. 
Let's add, uh, let's just add 13 days to this. I'm going to add some days to the charts now, guys. We're going to go back and take a look at some of those setups that we were marking on our chart. And uh, the reason for that is I want to see if they were at the extremes. It's really the whole lesson here today is to see if they're at the extremes. Okay, so we'll go in here. And we have a, we have a settings that you'll learn if you're using our software that you can, we, we put things in here for a reason so that if you're loading lots of indicators, so here it says optimize for speed. I'm just going to turn that to none so that there's no data optimization because I want every signal to happen in the past. You would only do this for backtesting purposes. You wouldn't need it for real-time trading, right? So that's why when, when we look at what our software does, we design the AMGs and the Mercedes Benzes for trading indicators where we spend a lot of time making sure this stuff is really, really top-notch for you. Okay, so let's go in here to the Renko charts, do the same. Let's go back here, data series, Renko 13, perfect. And I just want to make sure I get every signal. So if we're going to go back and test, we can make sure we get every signal. And we're going to optimize for none. Okay, is everybody following along? Have I lost you? Give me a yes if this is making sense, because the first hour and a half was the education on divergence and the strategy. This next half an hour is how do we use volume profile to really kick butt? Right? That's the goal here, guys. Traders talking to traders, helping traders. That's the way we see it. So let's go back here, and uh, I'm going to go to the other workspace and just see if I can add... Uh, So I don't have to go back and redraw them all. Let's just go back here. Attach all charts. I think there's a there's a bug in NinjaTrader's draw tool settings that doesn't allow us. See, it says all charts, gold. It does. It's not actually applying it to uh, to all charts. So if I go back and actually take a look, it's a NinjaTrader bug that I that I found, and and uh, might have to go back and and. Uh, <laughs> Redo those. So that's okay. Let's just go back super quick. Let's go to the range. And uh, and I'll do this without asking you guys questions. We'll just mark up the charts here. And uh, and we'll just go back and take a look. Okay. So I'm just going to draw the lines in the sand. All the ones that were winning. I'm just going to just take a look at trade setups that were valid. Trend setups not taking them. Trend setup no. Trend setup no. Trend setup no. Trend setup no. Trend setup yes. Or non-trend setup, sorry. It's so right here. Setup. And this one here, I can't tell if that... Nope, nope. Not taking it, so that was a setup. That was the 10 tick range. Oh, that's a range bar, that's why. I'm using the wrong data series. So we're going to go back here and load this. Because I had the... I think I had the wrong chart. Go back in here, add more days. Might be why it's not loading. I want to make sure we're using the same. Yeah, Vincenzo says, I use Heiken Ashi. He says, well, regardless of what you're using, I just want to basically teach you how to look at entry charts versus your... See, there they are. So let's go back in here. And range. It's a full range. Perfect. So let's go in here and just take a look at these. Let's go back here and just I'm just gonna go one at a time. So and we might be taking these off, eh, guys? We might be we might be removing them because if they're if they're not uh, in a valid setup on the extremes. See, those are all trend setups in the green background. I wouldn't take those. Green background, no. Green background, no. Green background, green background. That one was yes. Uh, this one was a red background, no. This one was a stop out, but it is valid. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put the blue lines for now, because we might not be at extremes in here. And uh, that's no, yes, no, no. We're not doing any trend setups. Yes. Okay, no trend setup, no trend setup. This one was, actually that wasn't. That one was not on a trend setup. Trend setup, so no. Trend setup, so no. Trend setup. 
I'm just going super fast because I'm used to seeing it, and then we'll go here. So let's just take a look at that. So now we've got all these trades, right? So everything I've taught you up until now has been about what we've identified for those trade setups. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just look to the hard right edge, okay? And we're going to go back and take a look at some of these profile charts, okay? Take a look at how we can see these here. Let's just go back here and take a look at them. Let's just use the TPO software for one. Let's just try the TPO. I like using the TPO because it allows me to, uh, to take a look at where we're at. Give me a second here. And I'm going to maximize this out. So take a look here. I'm going to basically uh, draw a box on that profile value area. Okay. And I'm going to draw a box on this profile value area. I'm just going to draw boxes here so that we don't, uh, we can take a look to see if the setups are above or below those boxes. That's really what we're doing here. We're going to go back. See how there's a line here? I want to make sure that the divergence is above or below those boxes. That's all we're doing here. So there's two setups back to back. I want to see if they're above or below these boxes. There's a setup here. So there's a box right here. And there's also a box right there. So we're just going to take a look here. We're going to take a look at that. Okay, and we could take a look here. I'm just looking at where the profiles are at that time to see if we can efficiently make sure we're taking setups at the extremes or not. Right, and that's how you really get really good at identifying. In real time, you can easily see that because in real time, I can tell you right now whether or not we're above or below value. Like if I were to just take a look at the real time profile right now, right there, and just go back to where we're at right now, I can see. I can see that if I were to get a divergence trade, I would want to be shorting. I would want to be shorting up here, or I'd want to be buying down here. If I got divergence, I would want to make sure that I'm above or below that box. Does that make sense to you? Because technically, that would mean I'm shorting at expensive prices, or I'm buying at cheap prices. Give me a yes if that makes sense to you. Perfect. So there should be no confusion then when I go through all these and I take a look at that. So let's just go back here now. And let's just bring it back. Let's bring it home. This is fun. This is really fun because this allows us to be able to increase the expectancy of your setups. Take a look at this. Was this below that box? Was it below that box? Yes. Was this above that box? We're short and above the value area high on divergence in an oscillating market. We're buying divergence lows in an oscillating market below the value area. Let's continue. What about this one right here? What about that setup? That setup happened inside the noise, didn't it? And had a harder time working out, didn't it? It was like it didn't didn't go as much as the other trades. This one we're taking off here, not allowed. What about this one? Remember this failed short? Remember this short? I said that was a short setup that didn't work. Wouldn't have even taken it. Doesn't meet criteria. What about the one below that did? What about being able to see below that divergence? Second divergence off the same anchor, even in an oscillating market, was below that environment. That's valid. Let's take a look here. This one right here, guess what? I got news for you. That failed short, not valid. This one here wasn't part of that trade. What about this one right here? This one happened inside that value area. Did it not? Even though it worked, if we're following all systems go on that, we can't take it. And that was a hidden divergence. So that was less of the time. That one happens less of the time. 
What? Damien says, what did I miss? <laughs> yeah, we you, you missed a lot here, Damien. We got it recorded, buddy. We've got we've got it recorded, but uh, but not to worry. We uh, we've definitely recorded it, and it's one of these webinars you're definitely going to want to take. So you see this one here. This one happened at the value area low. So we're at the extremes. That one happened at the value area low. Right there. We're outside that box. This one here, it's not important. Let's continue on. I just want to show you right now that we were able to reduce the expectancy of our trade setups to four trades, all winning trades. Out of that eight to three ratio, we cut it down to four setups, all wins. By following the efficiency of taking a profile and adding the extremes. We don't take trend trades and we only trade reversals on divergence in oscillating markets on the outside of the extremes in a value area profile. Bam. That's how you take a strategy and increase the efficiency of it. You may not get as many trades, but the trades you get are awesome. Uh, not this one. This, these profiles that I'm showing you here are the splits. So these would be the, the profiles on the TPO software. Okay, these profiles would be on the TPO software. The problem with the NinjaTrader version, so William's asking the splits, the splits on the TPO distributions. So we have an indicator called the TPO distribution software that allows us to merge or auto split daily profiles. So watch what I do, I'll take a merge button and I merge them back. So that would be considered the daily profiles. And then I, we have an auto split button that splits the, the profiles as they unfold during real time. Now, let's go back to the NinjaTrader version of the profiles. The NinjaTrader version of the profiles, just standard or, yeah, 30 minutes, yeah. <laughs> so let me kind of expand on this, guys. As I said earlier, the NinjaTrader profiles are only going to be, be able to be used in real-time analysis because we can only ever see if we're above or below the real-time profile. So that's why I don't like to use it. I like to look at what we can do from a developing profile. So if I go back, just give me one more, one more chance here. This is, and this is the fun part of the developing profile. So let's just, let's just delete all this stuff here. Let's go back and do it one more time. And just so you guys can see what I'm about to do now, because if you're not using the splits, you could use another type of TP volume software I'm going to show you. I'm just going to put a line in the sand, oscillating. We're going to go back here, oscillating. Trend, 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 we're not allowed to trade it. 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 Oscillating, yes. So let's just do this, and that would be an oscillating setup. So this one here is trend. This was oscillating and oscillating. I'm going to put two right here and put two right there. So there it is. Trend, no. This one here is oscillating, so yes. Okay. And this is trend, 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 so no. Oscillating, yes. I'm just showing you here right now. And then we're going to go use a different tool to assess the developing profile. Trend, 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 so we're not allowed to trade it. This one here is oscillating, so this one is yes. I'm just looking at gray backgrounds, guys, to, 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 to identify. If you weren't here from the beginning of the webinar, I would not expect you to understand what I'm talking about. You're going to have to go back and watch the webinar, which is fine. We've recorded it. And let's go back here, guys, and take a look. Okay, so let's go back here. So I got all these trade setups that meet criteria for the first hour and a half of what we talked about. We talked about divergence and oscillating markets, right? Now what we're going to do is I just showed you a breakdown of using the TPO software to identify profiles. I want to show you how to use a developing profile. A developing profile is the same as what it would have been in real time at that time. So if you're using a daily profile, okay, if you're using a daily profile, and if you notice here, I've got a gray and then I've got a pink and a blue, a green line. The green line, and I'll just draw this here so you can see this, this is the value rate low, that's the value rate high. Do you see how it shifts? The value rate high moves up, value rate high moves, value rate low moves down, so this is the value area in here. And as the trade, as the market unfolds, this is how the value area would shift in real time. So when you're looking at divergence, I only want to be shorting divergence above the value area high 
and I only want to be buying divergence below the value area low. That's what I'm doing. So every time I get one of these blue markers appear over here, I want to make sure that it's either above or below the value area high or low because that's going to give us a valid setup. Remember we talked about taking the strategy and, and increasing the efficiency. So let's just move this slowly. Let's continue it. Let's continue it right there. So let's just take a look at that, right? Well, that's the entire value area right here. So let's go back to the very first setup. So if you're using the developing profiles, okay, if you're using the developing profile, you would have not taken that trade because you would have been inside the daily value area at that time. You would not be in the extremes. And interesting enough, this trade actually gave you a bit of heat. If you took the long here and it pulled back, that trade would have given you heat. And do you notice how it tagged the low? That's the value area low it tagged before it bounced. So let's just cross that off as a no trade. If you were using the TPO software, you would have taken that trade. If you were using the, the print profiler, you would have passed on that trade. Okay, let's continue, let's continue. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. Take a look at this one. Interesting. Let's go over to the next setup. This trade setup right here. So let's just draw a little box in the sand and right there. Would we have shorted that setup? The answer is yes, we're at or above the value rate high. So the answer is yes, we'll leave that one there. Let's continue on. Let's continue on to the next setup. I just want to, I'm just showing you how to, to take a volume profile and enhance your divergence trades. So we're going to go in here. William's asking some questions. I'm not ignoring you. Just let me finish the topics and I'll definitely get to them, brother. Trust me, I see them coming in. So let's go here and let's continue on. Let's continue on. Let's continue on right there. So let's just draw a little box around the value area. And the answer is, would we be taking this trade? The answer is no, because we're inside the value area. So the answer is no on that one. Would have been a tough trade, because depending on where you took your targets, you might not have gotten what you wanted out of it, right? Like, you're in a, you're in a tight range in here, inside the value area. You're oscillating, and you're getting divergence on, on two, look at, divergence, divergence, divergence. If I take this entire range right here, that's the value area. You're trying to trade reversals in the most noisiest place in the market. You don't want to do that. You want to trade it at the extremes. Let's continue on. Right here. Interesting. The first setup, okay, we are below the value rate low on both of these. So even though this one was a stop out, we would have taken it, and this one was also valid. So those two would have been there. Let's just put this to red. So... Let's take a look here. Let's just change it to red. That was a stop, and that was a win. Okay? Because both of them are below the value rate low. So we'll continue on. And we're going to just see the efficiency comparing the developing versus the TPO software. Um, we'll do that, and let's just draw a little box. That's the value rate high to the value rate low. Take a look at that one. We would not have taken that trade. That one kept us out of a stop loss because we're trading inside the value area. Let's continue, let's continue, let's continue. Let's take a look at that one. That one is definitely outside the extremes. That's a valid setup. Let's continue on. Let's take a look at that one. And I think at the end of this, you'll see where we're going with this. This is on the reset of the day. That's a tough one. That's a real tough one, eh, guys? Because the value area, if you're looking at the value area at that time, you know, the value area opened here and here. So if we look at the value area on this, can I'm just going to put it right here, and that's the value area right there. So technically... I'm going to put this as a as a yellow because this is on the open of the session. Most people aren't trading the open of a session, so I don't like to. Uh, and that, that goes according to all of them, I guess, because it would apply to every one of them. I'm going to put that as a yellow. Most people aren't taking the trade as soon as the Globex opens, right? 
So let's just let's just do this and see if there's any more trades. Nothing. Okay, so let's go back and count them. So we had one, two, three, four trades, not including the maybe, one stop out. So 75% win on that where the TPO gave you 100% win. So it's just one extra trade that would have given you a stop out. But you can, you can see why originally we talked about it. Let me just grab a, a document here for a second. Let's just talk about this. The original breakdown, when we take a look at, and I just used one market, and I'm going to give you this at the end of it, guys. And I appreciate you spending your entire afternoon with me. So this is wins equals eight. I'm going to make this bigger because that's next to impossible to see, right? We had losses equals three on the original breakdown. Okay. After adding profiles. On the exact same trade, on the exact same trade, on the exact same market, after adding profiles to reduce noise, we increased efficiency on the on the setups to the following. So I'm going to basically take a look at using the TPO profile software. And this is Neural Street software, right? We had four wins, zero losses. So we had four wins, zero losses, okay? Using the NinjaTrader profile, we can't backtest because we can only use current time profiles. Using the developing Using the developing profiles, which is also Neural Street software, we had right here one, two, three, four trades, so three wins, one loss. And we could have easily said this would have been this could have been three wins because I'm gonna assume that we didn't take that that yellow trade. I'm gonna really reduce the system and be as real as possible. Let's say we had four trades, so we had three wins one loss. You see what I'm saying here, guys? <laughs> so what were we able to do with the profile? We took an exposure of 11 trades. We reduced them down to either three to four trades, and we cut the losses down from three to, to one or zero. This is how you take a system and you increase efficiency to it looking at how to add value to the strategies in which you trade. Now, if you're not using profiles, one R to 1.5 R. We, we took a look at this originally, the breakdown of this, okay? And we looked at all of the setups without even using profiles at the beginning of the webinar, and we said, hey, if you just take every single trade following the rules of our divergence setups, 62% win rate over the past 13 days on gold, 11 trades, and you could have gotten a one and a half to one reward to risk on that. Now, if we took the exact same system and added a profile, you would have had less trades, but take a look at the difference. You would have, ex you would have only had maybe three wins, zero losses here, or three to one, which is 100% win rate, or 75% win rate. You might say, well, Sean, that's only four trades. We're not running a backtesting algo here, guys. We're teaching you how to take a strategy and efficiently increase the, the expectancy of it. Now you have the enough merit to want to either trade it in real time or backtest it over a large sample size of data. You don't go backtesting stuff that doesn't make sense. And you definitely don't put any risk capital in the market unless you have a reason to expect something out of it. Right? Now, this might be a little bit more of an advanced concept to some traders. My job here was to give you a bang-up webinar. <laughs> yeah, the strategy adds value by adding value. <laughs> exactly, guys. So where do we go here? What's the solution? The summary is... okay. The summary is, let's just go back here for a second. 
We're able to take three market problems around momentum and divergence, teach you how to identify how we're using divergence on fast and slow momentum, the difference between type one and type two, and then really we spent the entire day or event talking about this. Which is the most important. Knowing when to trade divergence and how to add a profile to increase your winning rates and trade efficiency. Everybody got that? Did you guys enjoy that webinar? Was it a lot to take in? Lots of information, eh? Sometimes I talk a lot. <laughs> but I love it. It's my passion, guys. So this is this is what we do. Right? So uh, Jose says yes a lot. But I can assure you this isn't normally a webinar you're going to just normally join. You know, this you're not going to get this going to a brokerage. You're not going to get this going to a platform event. This is this is trading. This is building systems, strategy, efficiency, right? Using software. Not a problem, S. Elliot. Not a problem. So what I want to do okay is i want to uh give you a gift this is the type of stuff you can expect by using our tools and and our software take a screenshot of that okay that's an odds enhancer checklist for the vm divergences software